module or the channel does not show up for the sensor, let's look at the module. The, just to recap, the VNet module has all the brains. This is what transmits on the bus. So if it's recording and this is not transmitting, it's not going to report. Yes, absolutely. I sell the modules just by itself. I sell them with or without sensors. Yes, sir. You, you said you could lay the screens over each other. Yes. I, I've never done that. Okay, yep. I'm going to show you a couple of my uh, Bonneville runs because I've got them ready to go. Let me, uh, let me just start from scratch here. So I'm going to do a file, I'm going to do a open, I'll select uh, this run, do a file, open, and I'll select this one right here. Let me zoom out a little bit so we can kind of see this as a whole. So that is a mess. That's uh, unfortunately Bonneville's a little or El Moran land speed racing is a little bit different than drag racing where they all leave under throttle at the same time. Here right now um, on the, the one particular run here and let's let's change the colors on this. We'll, we'll do blue on that and yellow. So blue and yellow is one run and then red and green is the other one. On this one run um, the driver left a little bit sooner from the starting line. Uh, so we get pushed up on Bill or El Mirage. We get pushed to about 30, 40 miles an hour. Then we can safely let the clutch out and accelerate. Uh, in this case here, this one driver left sooner than the driver in the previous or in the other recording. So this is laid on top of each other. Now, if you want to see all the channels on both of these runs, on one screen. Once you get it selected for each run that you want, you can hit this graph tab up the top. You ever wonder what that graph tab does? If you click on that guy right there, now I see the channels for each run right there and where those colors are. So at this particular point in the run, it, it, at uh, 34 seconds, I had uh, the 253 run, it was 63, 73 RPM, and the other run was 67 or 66, 74 at that particular time on the overlay. Um, one could have been more wheel spin than the other. We kind of, the Bonneville and El Mirage always fight in wheel spin. On the second run, can you, can you swap the engine RPM and drive shaft RPM? Like, see now what you look at, you're not looking at the Oh, oh, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, if I deselect it and reselect it, I should. There you go. Yeah. I didn't think it was just the order that I reselected it. But yeah, now they're crossed from side to side. In the drag race vehicle, this is, this is more um, important than a land speed car. There's so many variables in a land speed car. But. Uh, the difference is like in a super comp car and a bracket car where consistency matters, you have to hit your number. You can make sure your throttle stops are activating where you want it to op operate at. This is a great tool for you to do. Any fuel system changes, you can look at the difference of the air fuel by overlaying. Um, if you're changing main jets, anything like that, you can overlay all your EGTs from run to run. Any other questions? Yes, sir. IQ3 drag dash? Yes. yes, we do have a separate little module that you can add that you can in introduce G-Meter to that. Mm -hmm. Earlier, yes. when we zeroed it out, mm -hmm. then you hit the save button. Mm -hmm. So when we go back in to look for that, will that, that be like a whole other run? Basically, it's still the same run, but it all will remember that the zero point is right at the beginning of the run. So if I click on that next week? Yes. It'll be already there. Yep. That way you don't have to keep doing it. Because you saved. I'm sorry? Because you hit save. Yeah. 
If you don't hit save and you make changes and you close it out and you don't save it, it will never remember it. Yes, sir. Overlaying this with the MSD power grid. Yes, yes. One of the coolest partnerships we've got with MSD is the um, integration of the power grid channels. So let's, oh, excuse me, let me find that real quick. So this is a prime example. So what we're able to get from the MSD is about 13 channels ranging from engine RPM to timing to the launch inputs to the step inputs, um, the switch shift light and rev limits. So right here is, if I click that, you have my, it's hard to see, but uh, you can see the engine RPM is overlaying on top of what we're receiving from the ignition box. Here is the timing trace that's being overlaid on the run from the MSD box. Here's the launch input. So this is where the driver was activating the trans brake button. He let go and then now it's off. So if you notice here at the top there where the channel is, it says one, that is active. Zero is not active. As soon as he lets go, that channel goes to zero and the line drops off. Once he lets go of that, you can look at, uh, here's like gear selection. Here's first gear, this must be a glide, and then he goes to the second gear. So the MSD will count the gears for you. This is important if you have gear retards, you can see that activate. This will tell you, the, let you know that the MSD box is ac executing that correctly. Here's when the step retard activated here on the MSD box. It goes from zero to one when it's active. Here's the rev limit. You can see the rev limit is active of holding the engine RPM down there low. Once tram brake is active, as soon as he lets go of the tram brake, then it goes on the run, the run rev limiter. In this case here, it is set to 8300. We always wondered if you tagged your rev limiter during the run. This is a quick, easy way for you to bring it up and look at it. What MSD do you have that people that integrates with that? Okay, the MSD grid is a timing controller. That's what is able to stream data over to the race pack. Um, it can be used with the grid ignition or any of the legacy other ignitions, the digital 7, 7AL3s, MSD Pro Mag. So that grid timing controller can be used on 90% of their ignitions they currently have or had. So I need to buy something besides what I have? Well, what do you have right now? Okay. Well, majority of the MSD grids can adapt to majority of the ignitions out there right now to control the timing. So what would I need so that I can pop the power grid? Power yeah, oh, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. There's two, there's two pieces of the power grid. You can get the, what he's talking about, basically the range of the thing, and that would hook to your 6 8 And then they have the ignition with the coil and everything. They have, the power grid has its own box that it, you can buy it with, it's two pieces. But if you already have an MSD box, you can get the grid brain and adapt it to the MSD box you already have. Whether it's a 6AL, mm -hmm. a, a, a 7AL2, or even the, the 8 series. You can take that brain unit and put it on any of those, including like a digital 7 that's already programmable. All you're using is the, your box is make spark, and then this other, the power grid brain unit, is what controls all of that. And then you can send all of that information to this. Right. So I, I, I mean, they're coming to the point. You don't have to they're coming to the point now that the MSD 6 ALs and stuff are going to start no, phasing them out. No, no. no. No, that's great for uh, performance hot rod vehicles. The 6 ALs are now, I believe, they make the digital boxes of them. Uh, is they, they have the digital version, but um, to my knowledge, is the 6A or the 6s are not going anywhere. Um, like I said, they have a different version of it now. They have a digital version of it. Yes? I saw you had clutch percentage slips. Yeah, before. yeah. Uh, but does that require me to drill and install a magnet in the input? Absolutely. So if you're running clutch um, RPM, 
we need to see essentially the input side of the transmission. So 90% um, of our installations will be on the input shaft in the bow housing. Go through the candlestick, draw, uh, uh, you can buy candlesticks pre-drill for a 3 8 hole. All you have to do is run the sensor through the bell housing. In the weird applications where you do not have access to inside the bell housing, there's not enough room in there for you, uh, certain transmission companies will have a provision for you to uh, install the sensor on one of the first cluster gears or inside the transmission on the input side. Yeah, Is there a collar? on the input shaft. Yeah, or somewhere where I can read that. Well, that's really strange because uh, all the ProStock cars all use the input shaft, and that doesn't make any sense to me. You know, all your top alcohol cars, all your Pro Mod cars, all use the input shaft. I don't know what they were telling you there. <laughs> G-Force was heavily involved in ProStock racing too, so I don't know. There, there, that's confusing me because input shaft is the primary way of doing it. Yes, sir. If you use engine RPM and drive shaft RPM, it can calculate uh, converter slippage? Yes, absolutely. So in this case here, you'll be able to see that. Oops. So here's your drive shaft reading. Let's just clean that up a little bit. So every data logger, drag race data logger here will have an engine to drive shaft ratio. That comes included. You're automatically going to get this. So here's your slip channel. And if you go up to the top end of the run, right now it's reading uh, 1.13. That essentially equates to 13% slip. This is also great for you to overlay. See if your converter's going away, if that gap starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, maybe we got a problem. How does that, I mean, what is that value? What is the one value you come up with? 13% basically don't, it's, it's a ratio, so we don't look at the one. We just look at the after the decimal point. Um, for those that run clutch RPM, um, we can actually put a clutch percent slip in there. They actually read the percentage of slip. Um, so if you're three, four, five percent or something like that, you'll be able to see that at the, in the data. All right. Any other questions? Uh, please help yourself with the water and coffee. I came in late, uh, so feel free to drink up, take water, whatever you like. Thank you guys for showing up. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, man. How are you doing, man? Doing good. Good to see you. Good. Good to see you. <laughs> Do you mind if we send our whole sensor configuration, everything back, and have you guys run through it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're more than welcome to. Is there any problems? Or? No, no, I'm having no problem. I got a couple.